Nothing clears a beach in summer quite as fast as a shark sighting. So what happens when some of the deadliest predators on the planet meet a professional mermaid? This woman is on a mission to show we're all mistaken about these man-eaters, and she's willing to leave her fate in their fins just to prove it. Here's ABC's Matt Gutman. Right now you're thinking this woman is shark bait. Professional mermaid Hannah Fraser has no air, fins, or mask. And she's locked into lead boots. It seems a death-defying dance. As she's swarmed by 16-foot tiger sharks in the Bahamas, some of the deadliest predators on the planet. Fraser's mission is to become the first human to plant a kiss, yes, a kiss, on a boat-sized shark without any protection. You surrendered yourself to these animals, and yet not a nibble, not an attack, not an aggressive motion at all, it seemed. There was not one single moment where I felt like the shark was trying to attack, was interested in eating me. They could have killed you in a second. No matter how much safety precautions we took, they could have eaten me in one second if they chose to. She says it's a performance protest. To prove the point that sharks' man-eating, boat-snapping, bloodthirsty reputation is, well, dead wrong. Which is why this isn't the first time you've seen humans getting cozy with the ocean's apex predators. There really is a lot of experience that goes into it. Mark Healy is a surfer and a self-proclaimed waterman in Hawaii. That moment when you're actually close enough to a large shark to touch it, there's things that you see as far as muscle definition and, and things that never really transfer onto film that just really are impactful. There are shark savants like cageless diver Mark Healy, and then there are the thrill seekers, folks like this Australian who used a cage, sort of. Checking it out. Hey. I turned around and I seen the shark coming for me and then I just threw the bird cage right behind my legs and pretty much just saved me from hitting, like probably grabbing my leg. So I've got to thank the bird cage, really. Don't try that at home. Then there's this guy from Florida who caught a ride on a whale shark in the Gulf of Mexico. I decided that, you know what, I should maybe go try and swim with them because it, I might not be able to do it ever again. It's also like this thrilling, exciting adventure. And people want that now. People don't want the ordinary. They want the exciting, the thrilling, the awesome adventure. And sharks can deliver. Shark tourism has grown into a $300 million a year industry with more than 80 shark diving centers in 29 countries. And with Shark Week now an annual event on the Discovery Channel, you could call sharks the ocean's new celebrities. But sharks do bite. So far this year, there have been 12 confirmed bites. And just this month, a woman was chomped by a small shark in Florida's intercoastal. That shark was believed to be about four feet long. The sharks Fraser danced with were four times longer. We traveled to the Bahamas, meeting up with Fraser and conservationist Sean Heinrichs. Sean Heinrichs and Fraser acknowledge the risk in this Blue Mermaid's performance. She's out there just exposing herself. A huge part of this is about trust. She's literally putting her life in our hands every time because she's down at the bottom of the ocean, weighted down. If we don't do our job, she dies. Still, critics like the international shark attack file call Fraser's type of performance a stunt, telling ABC News. Such practices are not only dangerous, but counterproductive in that the eventual backlash that will occur once she gets bitten will be directed at the man-eating shark rather than at the stupid human trick. I suited up to get a closer look myself, uncaged but well-supervised. A single bite, even a nudging bite from one of these sharks would kill us. She would complete out before we even get to the boat. But underwater, Hannah is holding her breath for 90 seconds at a time, again and again. Her only lifeline, the safety diver, giving her gulps of air. As the team baits the sharks, we suddenly find ourselves smack in the middle of an underwater sharknado. We have four tiger sharks circling in front of us. Heinrichs and I communicate wirelessly underwater. So what's amazing is that right now you and I are talking and we can point out possible danger like the tiger shark right there. But she didn't have that medicine. She had to basically rely on all of her training and all of our preparation. It's the day before her final dance with the sharks and she's prepping for that gentle head-to-head -head encounter. 
but after putting on her mermaid suit and swimming underwater for hours, it's all too much. You okay? Not really, I'm feeling absolutely wretched. What's wrong? Uh, the ear is pretty painful, I can't really hear much out of that one. Um, and my back is completely out, I think there's a rib head out of place. A rib every, head out of place? Yeah, and every time I breathe in, there's a sharp stabbing pain. Hannah strained her back, and the self-funded expedition she and conservationist Heinrichs had spent months planning could be a bust. It's a tense night. The next morning, she's creaky, but game. Here's the moment of truth. Going down. Last night was really, really rough. I didn't think I'd be getting in the water again, but the ears cleared up. We've worked on the back all morning, got ready. The conditions are perfect, and uh, this is it. This is the last try. Everyone understands the stakes. Metamorphosing into a mermaid sea goddess isn't easy, though. Hours of hair and makeup. Wow, these things are so heavy. Yeah, we specially yeah. created them. Yeah. We added six pounds of lead weight to the bottom yeah, of each the, uh, shoe. No. So if you wanted to kick up and maybe swim to the surface, could you? It's not a possibility. Fraser leaves her tail on the boat this time so as not to look, well, like shark food. Everyone suits up and we get the green light for the dive. This is the most dangerous part of this whole shark dive, according to Jim, it's actually getting into the water. Uh, we have to sit down and lie down on that step you see there, and then look down into the water to see where the sharks are, because the last thing we want to do is look like something the sharks eat. And down below, Fraser makes the nearly impossible look effortless. The divers working hard to fend off sharks with their bare hands. My guides tell me these sharks aren't foes, they actually like affection as I learned firsthand when a nurse shark, they say, comes in for a cuddle. And so Hannah goes in for that much anticipated smooch, hoping the shark will kiss her back. She gets close, you see her bowing her head again and again, but no kiss. Turns out these man-eating sharks are pretty shy. I'm Matt Gutman for Nightline in the Bahamas.